We're finishing off a project for installation tomorrow and there are a couple things I thought would be interesting for other makers out there. The first that I'm going to show you is the draw runners that we've been using for a large pullout and the second is a clear finish that we've trialled with the spray machine uh, for the first time on, on these birch plywood pullouts. So I'll spin the camera around and show you the project on the computer and then I will walk you down to the workshop and talk it through there. So this is the job in question. We've got a bespoke display storage unit here. This is a sort of bulkhead that sticks out into the room with the stairs uh, going above it from, from the hallway around to the side there. Now under there, which was a very uh, low ceiling height, but very deep space, we came up with a solution of having some pullouts, similar to, to what you might do under stairs, but without the, the angle that you get under stairs. Uh, so they're about 900 millimeters deep and they're going to be bookshelves and CD shelves so when they're loaded up they could be very heavy. So the runners that we specified for this were some Hayfully, well they're Accuride ones from Hayfully, which is here. Um, so these are the ones, 7957. Um, I've used these intermittently and I always forget what they are and go hunting again and then get overwhelmed by the, the range of, of Accuride options. So here's a little heads up for you. This is just about the, the highest load capacity one you can get. It comes in lengths up to uh, 915 millimeters. You can get longer ones, I think, maybe with a lower capacity. Um, and to help me remember all this stuff, I've done a, a little crib sheet here. So this is an email that I've sent between myself and Graham um, with different options mentioned there because one we've used before is the 5321 but the downside of that is it doesn't have the front disconnect lever which I'm going to show you in a minute because it's so much easier to see the real thing than have it described in text or even drawings. So the other thing I wanted to just highlight is if you're specifying these runners there is a massive difference between the 864mm one and the 915mm. I don't know why, but it, it's doubling in price. So we thought, well, 864 is going to be plenty, so let's, let's uh, not go paying above the odds for a, a couple more inches. Um, so you can always pause this and get those codes if that's helpful to you. These are the prices that I'm paying per pair, excluding that from Hart, Hart Wholesale, who I buy my Blum and Hayfully hardware from. So I'll take you down to see that in a minute, and alongside that, while I'm at the computer, we are looking at this this finish from Movac. Um, this is the code here, beginning HNAFL. Now that's a clear finish, and again, I'm going to give you a head start if you do find yourself using these products. <coughs> it is not easy to find the data on them, or Movac's website. So if you go to movac.co.uk, go to wood finishes down the side, then water-based coatings, these are the ones that we use. You've got a long list, and if I was trying to understand this from scratch, I, I wouldn't know where to begin. So I, I asked for a recommendation and was recommended this one, <coughs> which is the A AFL. Yeah, that's right, yeah. Very confusing because I don't know why they put at the top here, look, computer code, it's got 8099 in it, which is another product further down the list. Uh, but the actual product is the product code there, AFL3198. So that is this one, AFL31. So you click on your data sheet there, and it brings up a PDF, which I've already got hanging around, which is this one. And that helps you to make sense of the the other digits in the code. So AFL three one nine eight. That's the one we've got, which is a ten percent gloss. So that's a, that, well, that's a matte, really. <coughs> that's what we decided would look right. The thing I want to draw to your attention of this product is it has a very quick stackable time. So it's uh, dust free in fifteen minutes, touch dry in twenty five minutes, stackable in sixty minutes, which is very impressive, I think, for a water based coating. That's a big issue we've had in the past with the old Johnstons and Leyland paints that we used to spray with, that if you stacked them, even after a day or two, they would stick and, and then tear apart. Um, so we've given it a try and the results are pretty good. So I will take you down 
and show you. So these are the pullouts. I'll just turn the radio off. Good old Trax FM. Yeah, so here we've got the pullouts, three of them in this carcass, all made from birch ply. We thought this was definitely a job for birch ply, not MDF. Typical construction for us, except that it's 15 millimeters, which is what we normally use for drawers, as opposed to 18 millimeters for the carcass. Confirmat screws into the shelves. Uh, Craig pocket hole screws into the sides. Those are 25 mil ones. And here are the runners. <coughs> so when you order these things, you get a piece of paper like this, which is not easy to decipher, but does tell you where you can put the screws screws in. Now we used uh, Euro screws, 16 millimeter Euro screws, and we found that at the 60 millimeter length, they were short enough not to interfere with each other through the thickness of the metal, which is pretty sturdy, and the 18 millimeter side there. It surprised me slightly that there's, I think there's only, only four screws to fit these, because although there's more holes, I might struggle to show this, but although there's more holes, a lot of the holes are um, quite wide and won't receive even those, those Euro screws that need the five millimeter pre-drilled hole. Now, the thing that I really wanted to show to you on these, because it caught us out, is these do have a left and a right variation. So if I just show you this one first that has been that has been fully fitted, just pull that forward. The way they work is this this part, which screws onto the draw box or pull out of whatever description you're using, that has a, a disconnect lever. What that looks like is here pull that up and that will disengage with a little flap of metal which is there that bit folded down that just lifts a hook up above it which allows you then to pull the whole thing off the reason for the left and right is that the one on the left pulls up and the one on the right also pulls up so with a typical drawer you can get two hands under it just tweak those up pull the whole thing out now in this situation we've We've used three because it's tall, we wanted the stabilisation of that one at the back there. Uh, so it would be a two-man job to get them out anyway. So we have, because we had to buy five pairs, because you've got uh, one pair, two pair, three pair, and at the top you've got another pair and then one with a spare in order to fit these three pullouts that way. Uh, one of them sort of had to be upside down anyway. But the thing that caught us out was in the fitting of them, over here we fitted a, we accidentally fitted a, I think it was a, a right hand outer, so that's everything that you see here, this is the bit that goes to the carcass, which you, you screw to the carcass by lining up those through holes until you can get to where the screws go in. So that was that was a right hand one, which is indicated on it, see that says right hand upside down. I don't know why it's upside down, because it would always be that way for right hand. And then we accidentally fitted a, a left hand one of these, <clears throat> even though they do they do say, but it's quite easy just to, to miss that. So that you see that one is correctly a right hand one. So the left hand one, the little release lever uh, moved the other way. And the issue that we had was it's, it sort of got jammed behind this flap which it's meant to click onto, but because it wasn't lined up right, it sort of jammed behind it. So that's something to be aware of. Now this one, this one is only partially fitted deliberately, so I can show you this. So as it was offered in, which I didn't find all that difficult, I did, did that on my own, just, just lifting up this unit and finding its way into these kind of rubber padded bits here. Uh, what happens is you see that that's the little clip that will release. You can see how it works. That little nib there wants to engage behind that folded in piece there, 
which if this was the wrong part of the pair, the folded in piece would be up above. And what happened was it sort of, when we fitted one wrong, it sort of jammed above that instead of clipping nicely below that. So that will, see there it's just engaging, it needs a good shove. And that's now at the point where it can't come out unless you unless you release that. I'm sure we can see how it works. Now we did find these surprisingly tough to push in, which was a bit worrying, but for whatever reason, once it's in, I'll have to do that two-handed. Once it's in, it does run smooth enough. I mean it's not it's not smooth like say a Movento runner. But you, you expect, with three of these very heavy runners, you expect a little bit of resistance. And I would say it's smooth enough. They certainly do feel very strong. They are rated as 160 kilograms per pair, so the weight that they should take with the three should be more than enough. So on to the finish. Now we've, as I've mentioned in previous videos, we had a standard approach of if we were fitting birch plywood in base cupboards, which has become our standard material for alcove bases, we generally weren't applying a finish to it, which is something I wasn't entirely happy about, so we were looking for a good, easy to apply spray finish, because all the clear finishes we'd used up until then were, were brush applied. And so this, this is the finish that I was telling you about, the Movac one. Uh, I don't know really how much you can tell about it from here, but I'll show you some, some video of Brady spraying it. Uh, we're happy with it, it seems very tough, it's very convenient that it's it's dried quickly. It seemed like it didn't flatten off quite as well as the uh, the paint finish. There seemed to be an ever so slight orange peel texture to it, but I say I can't really see it now. Um, and it certainly, it certainly does the job. <clears throat> Two coats, because the first coat does raise the grain on any, any water-based finish, you've got to expect that, a bit of grain raising on timber, um, denib that off, second coat, and it does feel like a very well coated, tough finish. All right, thanks for watching, and any questions do ask in the comments below, uh, but you've, you've got the links on the, the websites at the start of the video, so do go look things up there if you want to know more about the products.